Welcome creatives to day two of the 12 designs of Christmas. Today we are going to create Christmas cards. Now I know you can buy Christmas cards at the store, but I figured let's just make some of our own. I'm setting up the artboards right now and also getting the sizing for our cards. We want them to be five by seven and I am making sure that our cards are that size and let's zoom in on the first one here these ones you're going to get folded in half um, when they get printed or if you're following along and doing this yourself too if you want to print it then you need to do like a seven tall by ten wide so I'm going to go ahead and make a fill color here with the nice blue that I had pre-selected pulling down my guide so that I know which side I'm going to work on, which is the right side here, because I want to fold open this card folding towards the left to open it. And then I'm going to create a cute little scene starting with snow. I chose the rectangular shape tool and made a nice rectangle down there. And then I chose the spherical tool and put that on top and I pathfinded those together as you saw there. And that makes our snow base ground here. And from there I decided to work on the sky a bit more on the card. And I wanted to create some snow flurries using the spherical tool and I just press Control C, Control F or Command C, Command F on a Mac. If you are on a Mac, I'm on a PC and created a whole bunch of little snow flurry dots all over the sky here, or what we're using as the sky here. I'm putting them all into place because I'm going to be putting some text right in the top center there. So let me just move all of these around to where they are going to be the best, and then let's move on to the text. So I'm going to start with a nice handwriting style font called Freestyle Handwriting. And then that would be for the words the most. And for the word magical, I changed the font into al fresco. I am really loving this script font recently. There's just something about it that screams Christmas to me. So I'm going to stack those and align them to the left and make sure that they're all set up nice and cute. And then I'm going to duplicate the words the most and uh, write the words time of in that first font, the freestyle handwriting one. And right now I'm just getting them all into place and putting them on separate layers. I know my layers panel is hidden from you guys, but I had one idea that I wanted to try out with these and I thought I can make it work because I'm just trying to like get the word time and of to be on either side of the G under magical. But I don't know. I'm just kind of playing with the spacing right now. It might not stay that way. And then I just duplicated magical and wrote the word year in that same al fresco font. And then I made sure that magical and year were aligned perfectly centered middle to each other and realigned the most above magical. Then I realized that the position of the words time of was not going to work right there. So I pulled them over to the right of the G and I made all the fonts have more of a whole number, which is why you see them being resized a little bit. And I pulled the word year up so that it's nested right there. And I think, let's see, I just want to like make sure everything is stacked properly. I'm going to increase the sizing of some, decrease the sizing of others. I, mm, you know, in hindsight, probably should have moved time of back down just a smidge, but that's okay. Moving on from that, I'm going to just resize them to fill the space because that's going to be like a big portion of the card. It's kind of like the title or the header of the card right there. And don't worry, I will be moving those snow flurries here in a second. Here we go. Let's just move these out of the way. Make sure I have enough of them. I'm going to duplicate, whoop, going to duplicate some of them. And then I'm also going to be moving some of these down here on the left side just so that it looks a little bit more believable as little snow flurries, making sure that all the nails are taken care of and everything's put in a nice space related to the font. Now, they disappeared here for a second only because my Gaussian Blur 
pop-up tab didn't show, but I applied a Gaussian blur to all the snow, flur snow flurries so they look like they're soft. And then I decided to change the color of the fonts to a nice icy blue to match with our snowy kind of like scenery here. And then something that is missing is a Christmas tree. So I made, a, I started making one out of a square using the rectangular shape tool. I used the white door tool to bring up one of the corners. I'm just going to duplicate those over and over and over again, that same shape, modifying them and squishing them all together to make it look like a nice stacked Christmas tree. That is our tree right there. Look at that. Let's, move, let's pull them over into the center of the card. And then we're going to make sure that everything is aligned nice and neatly right here. And then we're going to move on to the decorations. I duplicated one of the snow flurries from the sky and put it in position and made it a gold color for the fill. Duplicated on top of itself to make it more of an intense light. And then I took that grouping and just duplicated it again and again. And then for the second one, I decided to do the same process, but make the lights red. So you have golden red and golden red on a green Christmas tree, which I thought was really cute. I selected that whole row and duplicated it down and made an extra little light on the end, making sure it is pretty set straight. And then I did that process again for the last time, repositioning all the little lights on the tree to make it look more believable for the base of the Christmas tree. From there, I'm going to create the star. There is a star shape tool in Illustrator, which is so handy. So I put that on top of the tree, duplicated it, and made a Gaussian blur behind the star of the same shape. And that way it looks like it's shining. I then also put a shadow underneath the tree using the sphere tool and the Gaussian blur. Now let's create some little woodland creatures. I decided to create a fox out of a whole bunch of sphere shapes using the sphere tool. So this is me creating the fox using control C, control F on a lot of it so that I don't have to do the same steps over and over again. And that way it makes this process a little bit faster. Pretty much this whole guy is made out of spheres and I just manipulated the points using the white direct selection tool. And I then went ahead and selected quite a few of the shapes and I managed to pathfind them together. Once I got the points and the details where I kind of wanted them to begin with, just to make it easier, I created these little spheres for the feet for his little paws at the bottom. And I'm realizing I did not do the ears yet, so let's go ahead and pull the sphere tool and create little rounded triangles for those. And again, control C, control F to duplicate them, resize them, put them in place on the head. He's looking real cute right now, so I'm just going to pathfind them all together, making sure that that back rear leg is not pathfinded to the body. That way it makes it a lot easier when I go to color him with all the shadows and such. So now I'm just making sure that everything looks more kind of like realistic, moving the points with the white direct selection tool, checking the scale of him compared to the Christmas tree. Then I realized that the tree's a little bit too small, so let's like increase the size and then like bring it down a little bit. That way, you know, it's more impactful and it's kind of like the centerpiece of the card. And now to finish off the fox, I'm going to create a freeform gradient. In that freeform gradient, I'm going to use a dark orange, a mid-orange orange, and then I'm going to do black for his little paws. I'm just putting all of those points in, and the reason why I didn't pathfind that back hind leg is so that I could do this with the freeform gradient, and that way it wouldn't be such a hard thing to manipulate when it's all pathfinded together, so it looks like he has more dimension. That is the first fox. I then realized like I kind of need two, so I duplicated him using control C, control F, and then I reflected him vertically and put the second one a little closer to the tree. And then I decided that it needs a little bit more of a shadow, but like more of like a real shadow. So I took a sphere tool, created an oval, and then I chose the roughen option from distort and transform under effect and created the little snow shadows. 
and that is card number one. For card number two, we're going to scroll down here, I wanted to make it more simple, so I'm going to make the background a dark green, a nice foresty balsam fir green, in my opinion, and we're going to work on the right side of this again, because it's the front of the card. I decided to use the rectangular shape tool to make a white background. That way we can have everything put on the white background. I also chose the El Fresco font again and wrote Merry Christmas and centered that in the middle of the front of the card and chose to duplicate that white rectangle to make a lining, inner lining, and made that stroke red so that you, it looks a little bit more pristine. I then took the rectangular tool and created two rectangles to create a really cute truck because I wanted to make my own version of the um, coming home for Christmas with a Christmas tree type thing. So this is the beginning workings of a truck and or kind of like an SUV I guess. So I just pathfinded, or not pathfinded, I manipulated the points of each shape with the white direct selection tool and created the windshield using the sphere tool and just manipulated those points again and I'm doing that also with the bottom of the car for the wheel wells as you can see here I'm messing with the handles of the points that way I can get a pretty accurate wheel well here and then I'm going to soften all the edges so that it doesn't look like awkward points like the back wheel well is right now but I'll change that later this little sphere that I'm using here is for the headlight. I just duplicated that sphere and then made it the ice blue color as the windshield is that same color. And then I used the most basic sphere shape tool to um, create a circle for the tires. Duplicated that tire for the front tire as well. And then duplicated the tires to make the wheels, which is like when your tire sits on. And then I created more sphere tools for the front and back bumpers of the vehicle. I also made those like a nice icy light blue slash light gray. And then I decided, you know what, let's duplicate that Christmas tree from card number one since it is just above this card. Let's go ahead and take that, squish it down. By making the Christmas tree disproportionate and making it look like it's tied down, I wanted to go ahead and use like really fine thin ovals to make the rope that holds it to the car and then I used a rectangle tool to create the base of the tree which is sticking out there and I made it a dark brown color and now I am just duplicating the windshield to make windows so I made the back window and manipulated those points to make it look more believable and fit the car and now Moving from there, we're going to use the line tool and use a dark red for the stroke color of that tool to create the outline of the doors. To connect the lines, I'm going to use the pen tool to connect them. As you can see here, I'm moving the points all around to make it look more like a car door, make it a bit more believable. And I made sure that everything was set layer-wise proportionate so that way things that are on top and you see first is the things that are actually on top. And moving on from there I decided to use the rectangle tool to create the other two windows for the doors and I used the pen tool to soften the corners and made sure that everything was lining up with each other, resizing things. I duplicated that first window for the back window and made sure that everything was set in place the way it should be and this is looking it's looking pretty good so I'm gonna just manipulate some of these points here at the front of the car to make it look more like a windshield and to make sure that we have a steering wheel <laughs> that was something I noticed we was missing so I used the sphere tool to make a steering wheel and just pulled the bottom up with the white direct selection tool and make it look like it was inside the car and then while I was at it I decided to also make the seats because you know cars have seats <laughs> so why not make them so I made some out of sphere tools and I the rectangular shape tool and then I just used the pen tool to round off the corners I did the same for the back seat because the back seats usually more of like a bench seat and I am just making sure that all the points are set in place and that everything looks believable 
and I'm just modifying the wheels on the tires a little bit so that they pop a bit more. Let's go ahead and put a freeform gradient on the tree. And gosh, sometimes the colors don't want to blend, so I had to do some of the colors, especially the dark colors on the Christmas tree. Make sure that the light colors are on the top and then the dark colors are on the bottom towards the back. And now I'm just making sure everything is positioned correctly. I noticed that we had moved some stuff while we were designing the rest of this, like especially with the car. So let's just get everything set in place. And you know, that's looking pretty good. I think that's it. That's it done. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching the second day of the 12 Designs of Christmas. And I will see you for day three. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.